I'm Larry Walther. This is PrinciplesofAccounting.com, Chapter 13. And this is the final module in this chapter. And we're looking at analysis, debt analysis, uh, disclosures for commitments, lease transactions, and some fair value measurement considerations. First of all, looking at analysis. There's two ratios I would have you look at. One is the debt to total assets. Here, total debt is simply divided by total assets. It shows what proportion of the company's total assets are underscored or represented by financing. A related ratio, really very much a, a spinoff of the first ratio, is debt to equity. In this case, total debt is divided by total equity. Both of these ratios are seen as indicating the degree to which a company is financed or leveraged. Leverage can be a positive thing or a negative thing, depending on the relative operating performance of the company and how much is available for common shareholders. They're often seen as a sign of financial strength, but you can't draw any general conclusions about whether small or large values for these are necessarily good or bad. One has to look at this on an industry basis. For example, the financial services industry is usually highly leveraged. They may have 10% of their financing provided through equity and 90% through debt, and that may be perfectly acceptable. Whereas a manufacturing company, maybe 50-50 would be a more appropriate mix. Again, it is highly dependent upon the circumstances. Another uh, related ratio is times interest earned. Here we're going to take income before interest and taxes and divide it by the interest charges. This is how many times a company is able to incur its interest cost. Obviously, if it's not able to cover interest cost, it can go and default on its debt and really lose the ability to continue to operate. If this number is relatively small. It could be a signal or a sign that the company is on the verge of not generating sufficient cash flows to cover its mandatory interest obligations. Again, one needs to be very careful not to place undue reliance on one particular indicator. Even this indicator, for example, a cash-rich company may have a bad year from operations and look like they're having trouble covering interest, but it may be they have plenty of cash available to cover that interest, and it may be that their operating performance is going to return to a more normal, better state. What one should also be very careful about is understanding the nature of commitments that may not be reflected as liabilities on the books. For example, a company agrees to buy a certain quantity of supplies from another company. Often these do not result in the recording or presentation of an obligation on the balance sheet, but they may give rise to significant obligations in the future. Footnote disclosures are generally required for the aggregate amount of future committed payments typically with a year-by-year -year breakdown at least for the next five years. So financial statement users should pay close attention to the footnotes, not only looking at the debt that's on the books, but the other intrinsic commitments the company may face. Finally, I would like to point out that in the case of commitments where someone's locked themselves into a loss position, having to buy something in the future at a below market value, that loss might be recognized, probably should be recognized in the period it becomes apparent you're going to be incurring the loss. So a portion of that loss may be recognized and recorded as a loss. Lastly, let's look at fair value accounting. Okay? The fair value option can be applied to debt. Okay? We talked about fair value accounting for investments in an earlier chapter, but now I'm suggesting there is an option available to record debt at fair value. If markets rate, market rates of interest rise, the value of the debt may decline. A company could recognize that decline in a corresponding gain. Not many companies have yet elected to follow this option, but it is something that is available and it may be in the offing that it becomes more prevalent in time. Companies are permitted but not required to recognize changes in value of such liabilities. Entities that opt for this approach report unrealized gains and losses on that debt in earnings of each reporting date and the balance sheet is revised to reflect the fair value of the debt. Once a company opts for fair value accounting for a particular debt instrument, they need to continue to apply that indefinitely into the future.